What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. We're back with another episode of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide for Conan Exiles. Now the list of videos that I've made for the Ultimate Beginner's Guide is starting to pile up and I've made a playlist for all those videos. You can find that in the description of this video. Now you might have noticed that I'm wearing a full set of armor. This is the light armor that I mentioned in one of the previous episodes. Now, in order to make this, you are going to need to first make an armorer's bench, and then you're going to need to harvest 229 hide and 25 twine. The best way to do that is to make sure you have your skinning knife, go out and kill the NPCs and the shalebacks that are in the area where you built, and then skin them for their hide. But that's not what I'm going to talk about in this episode. Today I want to take you to one of the locations that I mentioned in the last episode. We're going to go after iron today, and I'm going to show you a location that has a bunch of iron. Now I do recommend taking a shield and a mace, and possibly a spear along with you as well, in order to fight the rock nos that are in this area. Now there are a couple of routes that you can take to get up to this area, and obviously you could skip these routes and climb to this area as well, but I'm going to show you my favorite way to go because I feel like it has the least amount of resistance. Taking the river path is going to give you more resistance because there are more NPCs and more enemies that route. And since I'm only level 14 at this point in my gameplay, I don't want to go the route that has the most resistance. So we're going to start right here and you can follow along with the route that I take in this video. Now the spot that we're coming up to now has what's called a Wanderer's Spawn. You may have seen that NPC run off and start killing the Shellback. This is one of the Wanderers, and even though they have a one skull, they are low level, so you can defeat them early on in game. The nice thing about defeating the Wandering Spawns is they have a chance to drop the armor that they're wearing. As you can see there, we got a light chest piece. That's the same chest piece that I'm currently wearing. And this is a good way to get armor early on, and then you can repair it as you gain the resources later on. Now I mentioned in past videos about boss monsters being around the exiled lands. As you can see there, we have a boss crocodile, and that is something that you want to avoid until you get later on in your gameplay. Since we've reached this area here, I want to show you one of the animals that you'll want to go and fight when you see them. And that's going to be this guy right here. This is a kudu, and they don't have a whole lot of HP. You can kill them very easily. They are going to attack on sight because they will be aggroed upon you as soon as they see you. However, as long as we just walk around the back, we can just attack it from the back. I recommend daggers because they will bleed this enemy and consistently add damage even when you're not attacking. This particular mob gives you a lot of XP and will help you level up early on. As we come across the ridge here, you can actually find some iron to the right hand side, and most of this iron is going to be defended by what's called rock nose. So I'm going to show you a rock nose, there it is there, 
And the best thing you could do with this guy is to block and use a mace. The mace is going to add Sunder against these enemies. And Sunder is very good at defeating enemies that don't bleed or have other weaknesses. So just continue to hit them. You can also walk around the back of them and hit them from behind. Now, if you don't remember from previous videos, Sunder affects the armor of the NPC that you're hitting. So currently we are negating 50% of the armor on this target because we have five stacks of Sunder and we get 10% negation per stack. These enemies are also a good source of XP and we can harvest their body for iron stone and stone. So this is the first area that you can work through and get iron stone. You can see there's another the rock nose off in the distance there. But for now, we'll just take these three iron stone. We're going to continue on to the location that I told you about earlier on, but you want to stay in about the middle of this section because up here on the right hand side, we're going to encounter our second world boss. And it's just rendered in there. You can see it off in the distance to the right hand side. That is going to be the King Scorpion. And that again is something that I recommend waiting to interact with. Now we're just coming up to the area where you're going to find a lot of iron stone and I recommend killing off all of the rock nose that are going to attack you in this area before trying to harvest the iron stone. Don't forget to harvest them after you've defeated them. If you have stones, you can use those for repairs or you can drop those on the ground and just go for harvesting the iron stone. Now that we've defeated the couple of rock nodes that were close here, we can actually start to harvest some of this iron stone. So there's some up here. And this entire area is littered with iron stone. You will have more iron stone in this area than you can carry back at this point in time in game. You can see that just on this plateau here, there's a quite a bit of ironstone right there. But if we look across to the other plateau over there, there's also a lot of ironstone. Down below on the other side of this ridge, you'll also find more ironstone there. You can see it all littered around the area down there. And then if we run up to the plateau above this area, we're going to see that there's just a litter of more ironstone. Now there are a lot of rock nose up here, so take your time in going through this. You don't want to end up in a situation like I'm in currently with all of them trying to attack you at the same time. But additionally, if you still haven't gotten enough ironstone from this area, you can see that you can climb up above right up here and get even more ironstone. You'll want to be mindful of your stamina and make sure that you stop at different points to refill your stamina before climbing further. And as we finally reach the top of this area, you can see that there's even more ironstone up here to be harvested. Plenty of rock nose as well to defeat in this area, but this is a great place to come and get ironstone because this area is absolutely littered with the ironstone. Harvest up as much of the ironstone as you can and kill as many of the rock nose as you can so that you can gain levels. The ironstone is something that you're going to visit on a regular basis through your entire playthrough of Conan Exiles. Iron turns into steel, steel turns into hardened steel, and these are all things that you're going to need throughout your playthrough. Now, once you've harvested all the iron stone that you can, I recommend repairing any tools that are damaged and then dropping the remaining amount of stone out of your inventory. This is going to allow you to get just a little bit more iron to take back with you. Stone is very easy to find in most areas of the Exiled Lands and the Isle of Sipta, so I recommend dropping it and harvesting more iron stone. 
and you may need to repeat this process a couple of times where you get over encumbered and then you repair your tools and then you drop the remaining stone until you get to that sweet spot where you literally can't carry any more back and at that point you're going to head back to your base. And I finally hit that sweet spot at 99%. I could go through and drop a few other things that really don't matter at this point in time if they're very heavy. But you can see we're able to run out of here with 690 ironstone and 96% encumbrance. Now that we're back in the base, we want to make sure that our furnace is loaded up with a fuel. Coal is a really good fuel, and I'll show you in a future video where to find a lot of coal. But for now, we're just going to use the wood. And if we press start there, you can see it starts making that iron bar from the iron stone. And it takes two iron stone for each iron bar. Now there are other places that you can go for iron, this is just the best one for early game, and it's good to keep that location in the back of your mind for later on in gameplay as well. Depending on where you build, that may be the most convenient location for you to go from your base. That's all I'm going to cover in this episode. In the next episode, I will show you how to use that iron to upgrade your weapons. Don't forget to whack the like button on the way out and let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite place to harvest iron. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for their continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. There's a video on the screen right now showing you how to create a tavern in Conan Exiles.